welcome to the over 2.5 goal strategy. I'm James and I'm one third of trading the market. In this video we're going to be showing you how to trade the over 2.5 goals market. So buckle up, strap in and let's get into it. First of all, this is not an easy market to trade, but by the end of this video you will have a clear understanding how to trade the over 2.5 goals market profitably. Now let's take a look at the market behaviour. This is the Manchester City v Chelsea game. If you have traded the under 2.5 market, the price decreases, whereas in the over 2.5 market, it's exactly the opposite. The price will rise as the match goes on until there is a goal, then it drops dramatically. So the aim is to be in the market before a goal is scored. Then once the goal is scored, let the price drop and then trade out for a profit. Now, the worst thing to do is to back the over 2.5 goals before the match is kicked off, as the decimal odds will be quite low. Even just waiting 5 to 10 minutes will result in a better price. And if a goal was to be scored before you buy in, that's no problem, as you can just move on to the next game, as there are plenty of games to trade on using this strategy. Pre-game analysis is vital. You should always be looking and doing your research pre-game to maximise your chances of a successful trade. Don't focus on if the game is going to finish over 2.5 goals. You might be thinking, what are you talking about James? But as football traders, we're not looking or worried about if this game is going to finish over 2.5 goals. What we are looking for is to take advantage of the market behaviour. We know the price is going to rise and rise until a goal is scored. Then the price will crash and this is how we are going to make a profitable trade. If I'm worrying about if the game is going to finish over 2.5 goals, I may as well put my money into the market and leave it there as a free bet. So when you're doing your pre-game analysis, don't get caught up on looking for games to finish over 2.5 goals. The goals might well come in the second half and this will result in us losing our trade. What we need to be looking for in our research, if you want to trade the over 2.5 goals market, is the favourite who statistically score the goals in the first half. This is what we need if we want to be able to profit from this strategy. Otherwise the price will keep rising and the market will continue to move against us. Looking for home favourites who score in the first half is a good shout, as they are more than likely to be controlling the game. Here is an example in the Man City v Chelsea game using soccer stats. We can see that both Man City and Chelsea score lots of goals in the first half of games, which is just what we need. So this would definitely be the type of game I'd want to trade the over 2.5 goals on. Now, the next thing to focus on once you have found a game to trade on is how to back the trade with your stake. We don't want to be backing the trade from the off with our full stake. This can be a bit of a mistake. As we outlined earlier, the price is constantly moving against you and if you want to profit when the goal goes in, you need the odds to drop lower than your entry point. Depending on the time of the goal, the odds may not be lower than your entry point, especially if you back the trade with your full stake all at once. So here is a great tip. You split your stake up and enter the market as the price rises and take advantage of the price rising. As time goes on, the price is getting higher and higher, which is a good thing, and something not to be afraid of, as this is offering you a better and better price. So you could split your stake into two, 50% in your buy-in and then 50% later, or you could split your stake into three or four, it's up to you. As long as you take advantage of those higher prices before the goal comes, this is called legging in. Buying in with your full stake is leaving you at a disadvantage. When the goal is scored, the odds may not drop below your entry point into the trade, leaving you with no profit from the odds decrease or they may drop slightly below your entry point price by a small amount which will more often than not result in a smaller profit margin. We want to maximise our potential profit. Legging in will allow this to happen. By legging in every 10 minutes or however you want to split your stake up will result in a better average price buy-in over the course of the game. So when the goal does arrive, the price will drop more dramatically in your favour, allowing you to sell your trade at a lower price and a larger profit. In my experience using this strategy, legging in throughout a game is a must. Now once we've legged in with our full stake, let's explore what to do next. Once you're in the market and you've backed your trade, you need to know what to do to get out, so let's look at some exit strategies. When a goal goes in, you have two options. You can cash out for a profit instantly, or you can remove your liability from the market and leave yourself with a free bet and hope for the match to finish over 2.5 goals. It all depends on how the match is going for you to decide which is the best option. Personally, I'd take the profit and run. In some instances, if the favourite goes a goal behind, it may be worth removing your liability and having a free bet, as the favourite could be more than likely to score two goals in the match. Also, look at how long is left in the game. 
If it's an early goal and there is over an hour or more to play, then there is plenty of time to get the goals that are needed. You're always going to make more money when you remove your liability and have a free bet, but if you're in doubt or new to the trading game, it's probably always best to just trade out for a profit and move on to the next trade. So what do we do when there are no goals? This is where it can get uncertain and you have to be disciplined because when you get into an over 2.5 goals trade and there are no goals, which can be annoying, you need to have the discipline to cash out for a loss at a predetermined exit point. If you're buying in say in the first half, you might be thinking of getting out at half time or the 60th minute or the 70th minute. The longer you leave it, the bigger the loss. But also the longer you leave it, there is a chance of a goal being scored and still making a profit, which is why it can be tricky and you will see that this is not a straightforward trade to follow. But as long as you have your predetermined exit point and stick to this, this will help. You may buy into the trade in the first half and split your stake at the 15 minute and 30 minute points and say I'm out at half time if no goals are scored, which is a good strategy. Or you could leg in for the first half every 10 minutes and have a 60th minute exit point. Do not be tempted to let this run, otherwise you may as well just be having a bet and jump over to a bookmaker. There is a big difference in betting and trading. As traders, we want to be disciplined in every trade. It's very easy just to let the trade run if there are no goals, and this is a common mistake for a lot of traders. Discipline is vital, so stick to it. If you want to increase your chances in this market, you need to spot when the market is wrong. Looking for games where the under 2.5 goals market is the favourite at kickoff with odds of say 1.7 or less, which means that the market is not expecting many goals in a match, and this will give us a higher price on the over 2.5 goals market, which could be say 2.5 or above from the kickoff. So look for these type of scenarios and then look for when the match in place is different and the game is end to end and explodes into life and it looks like there's a chance of goals. This is not a common scenario to be honest, but this does happen, but most of the time the market will be right and if they are expecting it to finish under 2.5 goals, it probably will finish under 2.5. Another thing to look for, as we know, the unders price falls and the overs price rises and the sign the markets have got it wrong is when the price doesn't really rise or fall and just sits there for a while, maybe 5 or 10 minutes. But this is a good sign that the markets are unsure about the way the match is going. So to summarise, look for matches where the odds are stacked against over 2.5 goals and the game has a fast start and looks like there will be goals, then you can buy into the trade. This is great for finding hidden value in the market. Now just before we end this video, I'd like to show you some live examples of this trade in action. This is the Villa v Chelsea game, I'd just bought in a few minutes prior, didn't even have chance to leg in and boom there was a goal. I've literally bought in for £4 and after the goal, as you can see, I'm trading out for £1.55 profit. That's 38%. Boom. Now here's another game from the Austrian Bundesliga, Rapid Vienna vs Last Glins. Same again, not having much luck with the buying in, but boom, having plenty of luck with the goals. Trading on matches where the goals have come between the 20th minute and the 60th minute has worked a treat for me, and it always seems very profitable. And as you will see at the end of this, I'll trade out for a profit of £2.62 from £4. This is 65% of our entered stake. If we were trading in larger numbers, we would be rolling in it. But for you, the viewer, we like to show you the art of the possible and show more realistic trades as to what the average person would do. Now, this next trade is in the English National League, Sutton United versus Hartlepool. I've managed to leg in twice with a stake of £8 and a goal has just been scored. Can't beat a first half goal. So we'll just let the odds settle and then we'll trade out. And as you can see here, it's given us a profit of £3.43, which is 42%. Now, last but by no means least, this is a game from the Chilean Primera B. Forgive me if I screw these names up, but we'll give it a go. This is Union San Felipe versus Club Deportes Santa Cruz. I think I just about got that right. Now I've managed to lag in for a stake of £12, starting with £4 and then going up in £2 increments. Now the market's been suspended, so we'll just let the odds settle and we'll see what we get for a trade out. But going back to the previous points, I would always lag in and take advantage of those higher prices. Now in this game I'm removing my liability just to show you an example of what you could win if the game finished over 2.5 goals. And as you can see on the under 2.5 market, we have no risk whatsoever. 
and if you were to leave this trade on, you would receive a profit of £10.30 if the game finished over 2.5 goals. But for myself, being the trader I am, I never leave the money in for a free bet. I always go to trade out and take the profit. And as you will see, once we've traded out, you'll see that it leaves me with a profit of £3 from my entered stake, and this is 25% profit, boom. So I hope I've given you some insights into how to trade the over 2.5 goals market and I wish you every success in your trades. So all that's left for me to say is thanks for watching and if you like the content we bring please remember to subscribe to us and like this video and check out our other videos. I've been James, this is the over 2.5 goals strategy and we are trading the market. Happy trading.